Once, uh, the first time I ever went to India, in fact, the opportunity arose for me to smoke opium and I availed myself of that opportunity. It was the only time in my life I ever experimented with opiates. <clears throat> the predictable result, euphoria followed by mild withdrawal. And that was that. Um, I wanted to know what it was like <laughs> to experience that, so I tried it. Um, <clears throat> now, a lot of people go to India and end up, well, at least a lot of people that I saw when I was in India, went there and conducted exactly the same experiment and ended up being swallowed up by the drug or the whole milieu of the availability of drugs in the Indian underculture. Um, <clears throat> Was that a reckless thing to do for me? I am, I think, a reckless person. It seems to be a dominant uh, part of my character. But was it absolutely a reckless thing to do? And how would I have known in advance? How would I have known whether or not I was actually dicing with the devil? And how do I know even now whether or not at the time, 25 years ago, I was dicing with the devil and I just happened to roll high as opposed to snake eyes? <clears throat> How do I know whether or not um, my actions are reckless at any given moment? Um, Charan actually has, in my opinion, valid points when he talks about suicidal ideation being a useful escape hatch at any given point in one's life. But it begs the same question. Just how reckless is that? And can we measure? Can we sort of say, is this an advisable thing? Or is he simply explaining, this is how I see it? When I'm standing there about to smoke a, a opium-tainted hand-rolled cigarette, um, am I risking my skin only, or am I risking this gigantic thing called the future? Am I risking this gigantic thing called consequence, called uh, even necessity or whatever? Am I... Um, <clears throat> is my recklessness so all-embracing as to be something that is unique to me? Can I advise anybody else, in, uh, in fact, to say, here, look, try opium. It's just an experiment. We just want to see what it does. The difference between suicidal ideation and promoting suicidal ideation um, is gigantic, and I think it's about the same as, say, the difference that I would draw between... Um, my smoking opium and my encouraging anybody else to do the same thing. Look at me, it was 25 years ago, it didn't do me any good and in fact it probably uh, strengthened me against addiction to harder drugs because I knew what was what was coming because I'd attempted it before. But how do I know what's in the head of anyone else when I tell them to do this? That's the catch, isn't it? How does an articulation of suicidal ideation end up being uh, some sort of proselytism and how would it avoid doing that I don't really know that there is a way to do it and I think that that's why <clears throat> we'll never really have a coherent view of suicide um, is, it, is the very idea of toying with it a good or a bad thing I don't think we can judge I don't think we can tell whether or not it's reckless